Welcome to the Inquirer 1.0. Today, we've got a fantastic upload on an altercation that not many people know about, but comes direct from Scouse Norman Johnson, very serious figure back in the gangland days himself, between him and the Cray Twins and his friend, another Scouser, Terry Kenny. So before we crack on with this, guys, if you can smash the likes, it helps get the algorithm out there and really supports the channel. Okay, with that being said, let's get on with it. Scouts, gangsters versus the craze. In the 60s, a little heard altercation, fight and potentially deadly encounter erupted between two up and coming gangsters, originally from Liverpool, but minding clubs in London. Scouts Norman Johnson, his friend Terry Kenny, and the infamous Cray twins. Scouts Norman Johnson was born 10th of August 1933, pre the Second World War in Toxteth, Liverpool. He grew up through the war, spending time in Cheshire before moving back to Liverpool and learning how to box at the St. Patrick's Boys Boxing Club, Topsteth. After a stint running away from home to Blackpool, Norman rejoined his family in London, where his father had left the Merchant Navy and was working as a caretaker at a government building. In London, young Norman honed his skills as a very good amateur boxer, who had the ability to knock opponents out with either hand and was regarded as a good amateur prospect. At the Battersea Boxing Club, he regularly sparred with Peter Waterman, the older brother of the actor Dennis Waterman, who played the long-suffering right-hand man of Arthur Daly in the hit 70s series, Minder. Turning 18, Norman was called up into the army, but the rebellious nature of Scouse did not fare well in the military ranks, where he had numerous clashes with his superiors and would go AWOL leaving camp at will. During this time in London, Norman befriended several faces from the era, including one Tommy Smitherson, who was later to be killed in a dispute, allegedly with a Maltese firm, Jack Spot, his mind to Bobby Ramsey, the Cray twins, Albert Dimes, to name but a few. He also piled up with a fellow scouser, Terry Kenny, who was as good with his fists as Norman, and they made a formidable pairing and hit it off from the start. During this time, Norman was involved in numerous fights and trouble, but was eventually released from the army on a dishonourable discharge, which suited him to a T. During this chaotic time in the sing swinging 60s, gangland London was a dangerous place, and Norman and Terry found themselves in plenty of fights and stints in jail. Terry Kenny was at the point, at this point on remand for beating up a club owner, Belgian Johnny, and there was another notorious criminal serving time there as well, one Reginald Cray. Reg and Ronnie Cray are the two most well-known villains ever to have hit the headlines from the East End of London. Perhaps this is due to them being identical twins as much as anything else. There were scores of dangerous villains and crime families from the East, South, West and North, including the likes of the Richardsons, Nashes, Brindles, Adams, Carters, the list goes on. But the Cray twins were undoubtedly dangerous men and had a firm made up of some of the toughest and hardest men pulled from all areas of London and favour a field, which made them a menacing proposition for anyone. The showdown between Kenny, Scouse Norman and the Cray twins at their mum's home in Valence Road apparently started after a fight in the visiting room of Wandsworth Prison. Reggie Kirk Cray was entertaining a visit from his volatile and mentally unwell brother Ron, when for some reason, which is not clear, a fight suddenly erupted between another prisoner and Reg, who was also on a visit. The other prisoner? One Scouse hard man, Terry Kenny, best friend of Norman Scouse Johnson. The story goes that himself and Reg did not get on, and the visiting room proved the perfect time for Kenny to strike. They smashed the granny out of each other, trading blow for blow, whilst Ron on the other side of the perplex glass tried to kick down the barrier to himself and his brother, who was given as good as he got from the Liverpoolian harbour and Terry Kenny. The fight was ultimately broken up by screws and both were sent to solitary confinement and an enraged Ron was ushered from the prison. On the grand scheme of things, fights in prisons, especially in visiting rooms, where there's a good chance things can be broken up before getting too serious or ten a penny. But when you put into the equation one of the prisoners was Reggie Cray, it probably was not the smartest move on Kenny's behalf. This public display of aggression was not going to be tolerated by the brothers, whose reputation was as important to them as the money they earned for their nefarious ways. Kenny managed to get out of his sentence and was back on the streets of London, back to minding clubs with Norman and getting on with making money through various activities. Out of the blue, Norman was contacted by Billy Nash, the older brother of Jimmy Nash, who was on remand for the Salwyn Cooney murder. There's a link at the end, guys, of this video to my video on the Nash brothers and the Salwyn Cooney murder, which the Nash, Jimmy Nash was up for on a capital murder charge. So if you watch to the end, You'll get a, a direct link to that. So I'm going to continue. Nash wanted to meet Norman at the Double R Club, owned by the twins, to discuss his brother's defence with their brief. Shortly before the murder, 
Norman had had an altercation with Selwyn, where Norman beat him up and was briefly viewed as a suspect himself. Norman knew it was dangerous ground due to the Nash's closeness with the craze and the recent bust up between Kenny and Reg, so went armed in case it was a trap. The brief did not turn up, only Billy and the craze, perhaps help hoping Norman would arrive with Kenny. After an amicable chat with no hostilities, Scouse Norman went on his way to attend to business of minding several clubs. A few days later, Norman bumped into a mob of crazy forces, including Hardman Scott, Benny Stewart, Willie Malone and Willie O'Dare, to name but a few. They were hunting Terry Kenny, now that Kenny had secured his early release from Wandsworth Prison. Scouse Norman realised that his good friend Terry's life was in danger and tracked him down to Billy Mannion's club in Portobello Road to mark his card that he was being targeted. Scouse Norman was too cute to be caught slipping and was not going to leave his good mate Terry in a jam, so contacted an old friend, Joe Perugia, to secure two pistols for him and Terry. They went over to the Q Club and plotted up, letting it be known to Dave Barry, the owner, that they were there. Not long after, Ron Cray called the club and passed a message that Terry and Norman were to go to Valence Road for a beer and to discuss a few things. Perhaps anyone else should may take the invitation at its merit, but Norman and Kenny knew they were being summoned for a bad beating, if not their untimely deaths, and were not going to go there unprepared. Terry Kenny and Scouse Norman, maybe due to their heritage up north, didn't hold the same fear for the craze as many did in the East End, but were certainly not unaware of the twins' dangerous nature. As requested, Terry and Scouse Norman knocked at the craze mum's violet's front door several hours later, after a few drinks to steady the nerves. Charlie Cray, the level-headed one of the Cray brothers, answered and quickly disappeared upstairs, which was a bad sign. The Cray brothers, Ron and Reg, entered the kitchen side by side, all smiles with hands outstretched. Far from being a pleasant greeting, Norman and Kenny had been worded up by mutual friends, but the Cray firm had chilled up in the back room, and as soon as the Crays took their hands, they were going to launch a ferocious attack, which would be the signal for the team in the back to join the action. Terry and Kenny took hold of their pistols in their pockets with their right hands and pointed them towards the twins within their rain jackets and shut the Cray's hands with their left hands with smiles of their own, making it clear to the Cray twins they were armed and any aggressive action would be met with bullets in the Cray twins' guts. Ronnie and Reggie, seeing that the Scousers were armed, immediately changed tack and shook the guy's left hands warmly and began a preamble about it was no good rowing between friends and they should all team up and help each other out when needed. Scouse Norman and Terry Kenny knew the olive branch was bullshit, and the only reason was that the Scouse pair had turned up tooled up. Even so, they were happy to take the offer and slip back into the night in one piece. Okay, guys, so I thought that was a great uh, little anecdote story, which was obviously written in my own words, but it's from the anecdotes of Scouse Norman Johnson from his book, which is quite rare now to get hold of, you can't get it on Amazon or anything. You have to buy the actual book. It's quite expensive. Black Eyes and Blue Blood. And what I'm going to do, guys, if you let me know in the comments, if you've enjoyed that piece, there's loads of amazing chapters in this book. And what I'll do is I'll take a few of the gems out and write it in my own words and um, give it to you guys in sort of separate uploads, if you wish. The guy was a serious, serious guy. He was very close with one, uh, Jimmy Tippett Sr., uh, another serious fella who uh, from London from the 60s and 70s, etc. Um, so, yeah, if you enjoy it, let me know. All right, guys, thank you.